Hello friends, welcome. Uh, my name is Neil Cooper. Uh, I have worked as a shepherd. Uh, I was a shepherd for 11 or 12 years. Uh, started off in the south coast of England on Goodwood Estate, which is a uh, no, uh, prestigious estate and you know they've got a large farm. They've also got the uh, motor circuit. They do the revival and festival of speed these days and they've got a large horse race course now. I was born and bred on the estate and uh, uh, worked, I lived at the horse race course up on the South Downs, which are the downs that go across the hills that go across the, this part, this region of the country for about 80 miles. And, you know, I was shepherding up on the downs and, you know, some of the lowland as well. Uh, they're, they're only about 600 foot high, so they're not mountains at all. <laughs> but, uh, uh, yeah, so we had a variety of different sheep. We had uh, mules and... Uh, uh, they have South Downs there these days, and they've actually gone organic farming there now. Uh, but we had mules and Scottish blackface uh, crossed with uh, Border Leicester. And, you know, we had some Suffolk-type sheep and some uh, Suffolk rams mostly in those days. 1,300 ewes with their lambs, so well over 3,000 sheep when the lambs were with them. Uh, we lambed uh, early in January. Uh, we had one indoor lambing group, which we had some dairy uh, housing that we could get them into. Lambed them early and then put them out to pasture. And uh, there wasn't much grass, of course, but we used to plant kale for them so that they could feed on the kale until the, the grass started growing. And uh, we used to creep feed the lambs uh, that they could get into little uh, creep gates uh, where the ewes couldn't get in and eat extra concentrates so that we could catch the early market. Um, you know, in the springtime when there wasn't much lamb about, we could get a high price for those lambs at that time. Uh, so it was good. And uh, then we had the conventional lamb flock. We used to lamb about four or five hundred early and then the conventional flock. We'd lamb about the 10th of March onwards for six weeks. And that would be a thousand ewes. So it was uh, a big farm, a big flock. Uh, I used to get help at busy times, lambing time and dipping time and shearing and stuff like that. Uh, so I'm making this video and after that I went to Oxfordshire, which is just up north about 100 miles from the south coast. And I was shepherding a smaller flock there uh, to get more experience. And uh, that was 700 ewes. And then eventually I moved to Surrey back towards this end of the country again to a very prestigious flock uh, where we um, had 1,300 ewes again. We did uh, early lambing for a week. Uh, we artificially inseminated the ewes, uh, collected semen from the rams and progesterone sponged the ewes and lambed 400 in a week, which was busy, but uh, it got it over and done with a week before Christmas. And then they'd be kept on nice littered deep straw yards and again creep fed those lambs and they'd go for the early market. And uh, we, the sheep we had there were uh, a Finnish land race across Dorset and mules again, a thousand mules. So we had 300 to 400, well about 900 mules, three to 400 uh, Finnish land race across, uh, you know, uh, Dorset, Pole Dorset, um, which uh, they could breed early. And uh, they were tremendous milkers because there's uh, British milk sheep in them as well, part of their cross. So they could, uh, had a high lambing rate over two lambs per ewe average. And, you know, they were very good and, you know, great milkers. And uh, we used to keep some of their ewe lambs crossed with Charolais, uh that we moved away from the Suffolks and had Charolais rams there, which we collected the semen for and inseminated them. And, you know, you know, it was good that way because you could get them over and done with. So I had to learn how to inseminate the ewes and collect the, the semen and dilute it and, and do a semen count and all sorts of things. So it's quite technical, but, uh, you know, it got the job done conventionally uh, sired and, you know, uh, lambed a normal lambing flock that went out to grass. But... Uh, the early lambing flock the ewes were weaned at six weeks. The lambs were left on indoors on, on concentrate and given more room and freedom. Uh, and then went to early market. And, you know, those lambs were sold in a prestigious, uh, you know, uh, Waitrose in London. So uh, they were marked as our farm. They were beautiful uh, tasting meat as well. Uh, it was good. And uh, while I was there, I was only there for three years before uh, the sort of sheep industry went a bit of a lull and uh, went downhill and uh, 
you know, this is just my introduction. This video, I'll go on to talk about many things. But it went down. I was my contract ran out, and they didn't renew it because they decided to get rid of the sheep and let the farm out more or less. But uh, the last two years, well, the last first two years I was there, we won the South of England Sheep Award twice for two years running. Uh, that's the only two years we entered it because the flock was immaculate, and you know I was a very dedicated shepherd, very conscientious, and you know kept that. To a flock in tip top condition, so I guess I was one of the better shepherds in the country. So, uh, you know, I have experience to pass on, especially for those of you that um, have got small holdings and a few sheep, you know, and you need a bit of encouragement and help at times of what to do and when to do it and how to get through these things. And I mean, it's not good, you know, if you've got to keep calling the vet out all the time when you can do some things yourself. So, also for those that just want to watch and, you know, see a different perspective. So, I'm I'm going to go through the season starting from now this is just the introduction video i'll probably make one next week or so and put it on a playlist which you'll be able to click in this top right corner for the play playlist or no this corner actually <laughs> top right corner for the playlist uh so um yeah just uh, on that playlist you'll be able to see all the videos i've made and you'll be able to pick and choose where you want to start and what you want to look at and it'll be about all the different things we're going through the year with the flock and you know what we need to be doing with them you know condition scoring them for lambing time you know maybe some people scan their use to see how many they've got to ultrasound scan them and you know different feeding techniques for coming up to lambing and, and vaccinations and stuff which we're approaching shortly so uh, i'll leave it at that for this video and we'll carry on from there i'll make my next video and you know we'll discuss about coming towards lambing time so thank you for watching bye bye of course my nickname's shep <laughs> my real name's neil Bye-bye, Shep.